Hello and welcome to the Voice of Life. This is Roger and Cheryl Hutchins coming to you today. And uh, as you can tell, we're our own camera people because we have to start the camera and come around. And we, uh, but we're believing God. We're believing God to move us forward. We've we've got opportunities on on uh, on television. We need some more equipment and uh, we need a, a place. We're believing God for fifty thousand uh, dollars. And I'm believing. Uh, I'm said believe in God. I'm not begging for it. I'm not. But I'm telling you, uh, if you if you're one with us, just believe God with us. Pray with us. And I believe God will send it. And uh, just uh, finding people obey, obedient to the Word of God. And I didn't mean to Amen. bring that out, but I felt like I ought to put it out there in <laughs> faith. Uh, we're believing God to, uh, as soon as possible. We can, uh, I'm seeing souls that are waiting to hear what God's put in these vessels of clay. Amen. Amen. And as we... Uh, as we come to you today, we want to continue. We're, we're still teaching. This is the, uh, this is lesson eleven on a, a Jesus built church. Uh, Jesus said, "Upon this rock." When he's talking to Peter after Peter got the revelation of who he was, he said, "Upon this rock I will build my church." So we're teaching on that. Uh, yesterday uh, we, we've been in the past two or three uh, lessons in Ephesians uh, eleven. Four, Ephesians 4 yeah Ephesians 4 uh, Ephesians 4 is where we've been <laughs> 11 is just one of the we're, verses in Ephesians 11 is Ephesians where we're going to be <laughs> we've been teaching, <laughs> teaching the whole chapter I'm sorry uh, but anyhow uh, that's one thing about it on the, on the on the videos you just get raw Roger and Cheryl uh, so uh, but anyhow not just Roger and Cheryl though you're getting the Holy Ghost too I promise you as we stay before the Lord and we're praying revival for revival come in our land and, and around the world. We believe God is, is giving us a mandate to go across this country uh, and that's why we need part of why we need that, uh, the money uh, to go across this country and around the world uh, with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not just not just a dead letter, not just, uh, you know, we just come back from uh, from another country where, uh, you know, we're teaching on the, the the liberty of God, whom the Son set free is free indeed. And, and we find all these rules and stuff that people are trying to bring in so it'll fit their, uh, so they have some, Lord over God's heritage, but I want to tell you, uh, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I'm not talking about free to sin, but I'm talking about free to walk for God, free to walk righteously and holy uh, before the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the preacher showing up. I'm sorry, uh, but anyhow, there it is. Um, let's pray, and then we want to get back in, and we are going to pick up uh, at Ephesians four and verse eleven. <laughs> I'll get it straight in a minute. Uh, but as we pray, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, please ask Him. Uh, ask Him into your heart. Ask Him to be part of your life. If you believe in your heart and confess Him with your mouth, you'll be born again. And the Scripture says when you're born again, you can see the kingdom of God and you can enter into the kingdom of God. That's something that He's given to us to do as soon as we are born again. Not something we do when we die. It's something we do as soon as we are born again. We see the kingdom of God and we enter into the kingdom of God. So uh, I want you to, to do that as we pray. If you're sick, if you're ill, if you're afflicted in any way, our prayer, our prayer of faith uh, will help you and agree with you. And you, if you'll believe with us, I promise you the healing of the Lord will come. By His stripes, you are heal. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, we call upon the name of the Lord and we ask you, Father, those that are um, listening today, they don't know you, but God, they uh, the, there's some reason they stopped at the video today. Some reason they stopped to hear, uh, to, to hear what we had to say. And Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I want to ask you, God, as they uh, ask you into their heart, God, as they believe in their heart and confess you with their mouth, uh, God, that salvation 
uh, begin to come forth. Father, I pray for those that are sick, those that are uh, going through some kind of physical uh, ailment, physical uh, test in their body right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. Uh, God, that you... Mm, uh, I'm sensing somebody healed, uh, being healed in their uh, a woman, a woman being healed in your um, female parts, in their uh, especially the ovaries. I'm getting ovaries uh, that that the ovaries uh, you, you've been trying to conceive, trying to, uh, but but because of some kind of infection, something going on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to that infection be gone, and we thank you, Lord, that you bring forth the desire of her heart. Uh, God, and we ask you, Lord, that you just perform it by your Holy Spirit. God, now as we go into the Word of God, we ask you, Lord, to open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, that we can receive what Holy Spirit teaches us today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, as we ended yesterday, uh, we were talking about uh, those fivefold ministry gifts, and Cheryl shared... Uh, Share something about the heart of the ministry. Give, give me just a synopsis of what you were sharing when we left yesterday. Okay. Well, the point of the giftings. I was reading from Alana Hutchins, our daughter-in-law, her writings that she had written several months back um, on the different giftings. And what she said was that the giftings are supposed to show forth the heart of God. That's the whole point Amen. of it. And as, as the heart of God is made known, this is what helps people, first of all, to come to peace, to know they can trust God, and to not be afraid of righteousness. <laughs> righteousness meaning standing right before God and being bold and open about talking to our Father. Yeah. Um, but it's to reveal the heart of God and to teach the church. Uh, as we said, we read in Timothy, there is a behavior in the church, in the house of, the, of God. That's in us and in the place where we gather together as the church. So this is the whole point, that the giftings reveal the heart of God. And of course, it goes on further into expounding the scriptures so we can see the heart of God in those scriptures and not see God as some harsh, mean judge. He is a judge, but he's a just judge. And um, we can see God in the right light. I couldn't do that for years because I was brought up in a denomination that just talked about all the things we couldn't do and that God was going to punish us if we didn't uh, do everything perfectly right and I grew up feeling hopeless because it's like I, I just can't be perfect I can't do all these things I didn't know how I didn't know how <laughs> I didn't know Holy Spirit came yeah. here to help me understand amen. those things amen so we're talking about the heart of God and the heart of God is to as he builds his church and as we said in a previous lesson, so please go back and listen if you haven't listened to the to the uh, videos all the way through. Go back to lesson one. Uh, you can do it on YouTube. Uh, go back on my Facebook and, and go straight to YouTube. It gives you a layout. Uh, my name, Roger Hutchins, uh, on YouTube. And there's two different channels. It's uh, uh, the, the second one. Uh, the one with the gray hair. Uh, <laughs> that's the most current. <laughs> that's the most current one. Uh, but anyhow, if you go back on it, you can go all the way back to, to one, and there's other lessons on that that we have taught as well uh, for you. But uh, when we're talking about the gifts, remember, one thing I want you to remember, very important that you remember, as he gave gifts unto men, he's not talking about just giving. I, I'm, my calling is a prophet of God. Uh, but the gift, that gift was not given for me, it was given for you. It was given for the body of Christ. It was given uh, for the the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So um, uh, let's read. I'm going to read in the Amplified now before I go on and we're going to define some of these giftings. Uh, but in the Amplified, starting with verse 8, 
uh, let's read because the Amplified inserts some of the uh, definitions that we'll find in Strong's and, and so forth uh, in the place there to expand our understanding. It says, therefore, uh, it is said when he ascended on high and led captivity captive, uh, he led a train of vanquished foe and he bestowed gifts on men. But he, ascend, but he ascended now, what can this he ascended mean but that he had previously ascended from the heights of heaven, uh, heaven into the depths of the lower parts of the earth. Now again, when we talked about the, the uh, into the lower parts of the earth, he's not talking about going into the center of the earth. <laughs> he's talking about uh, coming into uh, a body of people where he can live and dwell in the earth and do the work through us and with us. Uh, that Go back and listen to some of our previous lessons and we explain some of that. Uh, he who descended is is the very same as he as he who also ascended high above all heavens that he might uh, that that he his presence might fill all things the whole universe from the lowest to the highest and now remember uh, he in uh, John 14 said he and his father would take up his abode their abode in us and then he ascended back on high. Why? That he might fill all things. He fills us, but he fills the universe. He's God. He's a spirit. Amen. Um, and he gave, and his gift was, varied he himself appointed and gave men unto us, some to be apostles. What did he give? He gave men unto us. The men were, I'm a gift from God, my calling, to the body of Christ. Not for me, not for me to say, look at this great prophet, but for me to say, this gifting is for you to edify, to lift up, to uh, to empower you to do the work of the ministry. Uh, some apostles, uh, special messengers, some prophets, inspired preachers and expounders, and some evangelists, preachers of the gospel, traveling missionaries, some pastors, shepherds of the flock and teachers now uh, as we begin to look at those I'm going to look at them individually anything you want to say before we yeah. continue on the, the apostle let's look at the apostle first and I, I, I not only look at the, the original Strong's word but if it gives another word the, the root uh, we begin to dig down and look and see what uh, what they say now there let me say this when we start talking about the apostolic and the prophet there are a ton of different books out there and i've looked at some of them some of them are worth me uh talking about because they're lifting up uh, men and trying to put them on some kind of pedestal but there are some out there that give a good idea of uh of what the apostle is and how they are given uh, to establish and not the not only the, the the apostle but the the prophet and so forth um, but the word uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to read all of these uh, but anyhow the word uh, apostle is from a new testament the word apostolos uh, and it is a delegate uh, a special ambassador uh, of the gospel uh, officially a commissioner of Christ uh, the scripture says it's a sent one uh, not, not the scripture but it, it also says he's a sent one uh, in other words uh, you know somebody sitting in a church uh, and saying I'm this great apostle but they're never sent uh, out they never uh, are functioning apostolically there's something uh, out of place there uh, so uh, he that is sent, uh, apostle, messenger, he that is sent. Uh, now, some people say, uh, or it does talk about uh, with miraculous powers. Uh, the only thing I want to caution you about and I want to tell you about is that uh, 
miracles and signs and wonders are not just for apostles. Miracle signs and wonders are for these signs. Uh, Mark 16 uh, says, These signs shall follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick. Now that doesn't take an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. All that does is take somebody who believes. And if you run across somebody, it is, uh, I think, shame on you if you have to say, well, wait until I call uh, the, 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 the pastor of the church or the apostle or whatever. Shame on you because you are a believer. Uh, activate the gift that's in you. Lay hands on that the sick and trust God, believe uh, that they will recover. I promise you I'm going to do that. And whenever you do that, then, then you take your place as a believer. So, uh, anyhow, I'm not trying to... Uh, I do believe, uh, I do believe that, that apostles have, uh, have power, miraculous power, uh, but no more than any other believer. Uh, it's just that they wind up many times in the place where there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on. They wind up, you know... Uh, Sometimes you just get results because you're the one that's there, <laughs> you know. And if you lay hands on somebody and they get healed now, don't run out and start your healing ministry. Just keep believing and keep going because people misunderstand that the gifts of God work in all the body of Christ that believe. So, uh, amen. Anything on the apostle? She's not going to say anything. All right, the prophet. Let's look at the prophet. Uh, and I'm trying to keep this simple. I thought about going into some of the books and different things, but I want to just look at what the function is, uh, because uh, as Cheryl already read on um, yesterday in Atlanta's uh, writing uh, about the heart, of the heart of the the teacher and the heart of, and how it's the Holy Ghost that teaches and so forth. Uh, but uh, whenever the the, the the ministry functions properly, can I tell you? there is growth and increase. Now, I, I, we'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself because I've got that down, on down in here. Uh, but uh, a prophet, uh, an inspired speaker, there's one thing that people misunderstand. I know people that just because somebody has the gift of prophecy and they prophesy in a service that they try now to make them a prophet. Just because you have the gift of, of prophecy and you prophesy in a service does not make you a prophet. Now, the worst thing you can do, Pastor, is go out for the first one that stands up in your service, the first one that, that prophesies and says, oh, now he or she is a, a prophet. Uh, you know, sometimes we uh, create problems for ourselves uh, by trying to get ahead of God. Uh, so I'm, I'm firm on this. I understand God has taught me, Holy Spirit has taught me on this, uh, that you cannot just take somebody uh, that stands up and prophesies. In fact, let me also say something else about the gift of prophecy uh, here because uh, in the gift of prophecy, you must understand that, that uh, the gift of prophecy mu must come with a rhema from God. It's a current word from God. It's not some generic thing that you've memorized and you prophesy in every uh, group of every congregation you come into. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not some kind of rhyme or, or something that's going on. Uh, it is uh, a rhema from God. The prophet, on the other hand, is, uh, is a, uh, one of the, the, the fivefold ministry giftings uh, and he is a an inspired speaker. In other words, whenever uh, he speaks, I know this from experience because my calling is prophetic. Uh, most of my effectiveness uh, is not in prophesying individually to people, and though I do that at times, but most of my effectiveness uh, is whenever I speak and the prophetic anointing comes on me. Uh, the prophet points the way. Uh, John the Baptist was a prophet, and he foretold, he foresaw, uh, he made the way, he said, prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, and as he prophesied, of course, he was, uh, according to the scripture, he was under that old old uh, order or, or under the Old Testament type of a prophet. Uh, but uh, even prophets under the New Testament, these prophets uh, 
see the way they see the, the futuristically many times but sometimes just write things that need to happen uh, now uh, you do yourself a service to find somebody that you can tr trust their prophetic gifting and you can tie into them I'm talking to preachers now uh, you can tie into them and you can hear the word of the Lord uh, 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 apostles don't go out and do everything and do all the government on their own there's nowhere in the scripture that says that all right now um, digging into the next level uh, down from on the the, the prophet uh, it says uh, above or uh, before in other words before it comes to pass uh, God's gonna he'll do nothing except he reveal it to his servants the prophets that's what the scripture says so whenever God's about to do something in the earth, that's why I'm so excited that I see God moving uh, in a mighty way. The, 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 I see religion trying to raise its head against the, the Christianity today. I see religion trying to uh, trying to, to stand up with some kind of superiority. But I tell you what, God gave me a vision. I, I saw a thing uh, on, on Facebook where this certain religion is determined they're going to take over uh, take over and change all the mindsets uh, to that. But I, God showed me that vision, remind me of Dagon uh, that that was set in the temple before the Ark of the Covenant. And guess what happened? Oh, glory to God. I, uh, if I went in front of this camera, I might run right now. Guess what happened? Uh, is that that Dagon fell and broke his head off. And, and I'm going to tell you, uh, every name that tries to raise its head above the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to fall to the earth and there no authority, no headship, nothing going to manifest itself against the power of the living God. Amen. You can write that, put, put that in your notes, <laughs> write it down, that, 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 that Prophet Roger Hutchins said that uh, today. What's the date today? Um, second, uh, October 2nd, 2019 uh, is when it said it's on this video. Hold on to the video because watch what God does. God is going to cause some things to fall face down. Uh, hallelujah. And be embarrassed because God, the name of the Lord, is a, is a strong tower and we run into him and we are safe. Amen. Now let's move on. Wait. Oh, uh, well, Cheryl's got it. <laughs> I want to just say a few things about the prophet um, because I do feel it's misunderstood. And as Ro as Roger said, the giftings which are listed in 1 Corinthians 12, you can read there about the gift of prophecy. But the prophet who stands in the fivefold gifting, or we call it the office of a prophet, he or she is to hear from God and bring that word of God down and speak it to the people. If you remember, Moses was called a prophet. In fact, it was foretold of Jesus that there would be a, a great prophet coming after like unto Moses, referring to Jesus. What did Moses do? He heard from God. He came and told the people. Amen. What did Jesus do? He only spoke what he heard the Father saying, and he came and he spoke it to the people. He only did what he saw the Father doing, and that's what he did in the earth. He didn't heal everybody all the time, but the ones the Father said healed, that's who he healed. The point is, is that many people think that a prophet is just supposed to tell you something that's going to happen in the future, and that's part of it. But that's not all of it. He is to tell us and instruct us in the ways of God so that we can understand how to walk out this Christian life. Amen. And um, so that's part of why he's called an inspired speaker. It's not because he gets this bright idea and he's so inspired that self-help books are full of somebody's inspired idea. But this inspired speaker is inspired by the holy living God. And then he brings that forth to the people. And it would behoove us to pay very close attention to what any true prophet of God has to say. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, the next gifting we want to talk about is the evangelist. Now, uh, the, the evangelist 
the idea and thought of the evangelist, I think, has been kind of confused in our day and time uh, because we look at TV evangelists, we look at uh, people with showmanship and all this. Uh, the, the evangelist is not called some kind of theatrical performance. The evangelist is called uh, to tell the good news. The word is uh, in the New Testament, Strong's number uh, 2099. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know if I can pronounce that, but it's a, uh, anyhow, it's the Greek word for evangelist. Uh, and it, it says, a preacher of the gospel. Now remember, we're going to go on down to 2097 uh, because it says uh, to announce good news. Somebody told me not long ago that they thought the, the evangelist was just supposed to teach the body how to evangelize. And that's not what this, that's not what the definition says. The evangelist is a preacher. He's somebody that proclaims good news. Now, um, if you want a lesson on how you should evangelize, just tell a story. <laughs> just, yeah. just talk to somebody about Jesus. I saw on the uh, on uh, uh, Facebook the other day two little little babies. One of them maybe a year old, and the other one uh, maybe less than that. But uh, they were they were they were singing and worshiping God, and uh, and I thought bravo. Uh, that at that young age they're teaching them how to worship God and you know there's the key uh, is is just tell the story you know uh, my, my most powerful times of ever winning somebody uh, has been simply when I told told of how Jesus Christ saved me at the age of seven years old and how that uh, in my living room at 3700 Wyandotte Avenue in Winston-Salem North Carolina uh, my uncle, who was a Baptist preacher, came in there and told the story. And I gave my heart to Jesus and uh, I've been with him ever since. Amen. There have been ups and downs, but thank God uh, he has brought me through every situation. Uh, he saved my soul and I still love him today. Amen. So the evangelist is a preacher. He's preaching the good news. He's that's very important as we go into go, we're going to go into the next part because there was a part the evangelist had to play and many times the evangelist had to go into an area and, and preach the good news the gospel before the apostles ever came in and tried to help establish the, the church and establish uh, and, and you know what uh, today I see people the apostles trying to do it all and I see people call themselves prophets trying to do it all and so forth but that's not the way it's designed every every gifting has a function and although every one of us every one of us whether you feel or call to any of these fivefold ministry giftings or not you should be able to tell the story <laughs> you know I, my, my children every one of them they were about three years old I sat them down and I told them the story. I told them, talked to them about Jesus. And I, of course, they were in church with me from the time they were born. Uh, you know, uh, sitting on my lap when somebody was preaching and sitting on with their mother when I was preaching. And uh, But see, God, uh, the evangelist, one thing we do need is true evangelists. Not somebody that wants to be a hot shot on television. <laughs> we need somebody that's going to uh, go forth and gather the people with the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're out of time. Cheryl just reminded me of that. Amen. We'll come back, uh, talk another minute about uh, the evangelist, but I want to remind you again, um, on uh, October 12th and 13th, uh, 11, no, 11th, October 11th and 12th, that's Friday and Saturday, uh, 2019, we'll be in Lexington, North Carolina, uh, 3664 uh, North Carolina Highway 8, Lexington, North Carolina, 27292. That's at Speedy Lord's Barbecue. There's an annex building right uh, beside of Speedy Lord's. We'll be in there. It's set up, uh, be set up for us. And uh, God bless you. Uh, we love you. Father, bless and touch every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of our voice. And as we, uh, as we end this video, we ask you, Lord, that they just be... Um, that your word be magnified, that, that every man, woman, boy, and girl be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. 
Uh, we'll be back tomorrow and uh, or on the next time whenever you look up this video. We love you. God bless you.